Hello everybody, it's Irene from the Penetanguishing Public Library. Um, this is Black History Month and to celebrate it, I am going to be reading an expert from A Love Letter to Africville, which is written by Amanda Carvery Taylor. The foreword is by Dr. Claudine Bonner. And that's what I'm going to be reading is the foreword. So, at the northern tip of the Halifax Peninsula on the shores of the Bedford Basin is an area named Seaview Park. It is located between the McKay Bridge and the Port of Halifax with shipping containers coming and going day in and day out. A tiny church building sits on a patch of green in this industrial corner of the city. This is the Africville Museum. The building is all that is left of an historic African Nova Scotian community, a vibrant community that existed on this land for almost 200 years. In 1848, two black men, William Brown and William Arnold, purchased 15 acres of land. These purchases marked the start of what would become a tight-knit African Nova Scotian settlement. Africville sat on the edge of the growing city of Halifax. In 1849, the community held their first service in what became known as the Seaview Baptist Church. This church was seen by many as the heart of the community. Africville struggled for survival throughout its existence. The city of Halifax collected taxes from the community but provided no services. There were no paved roads, no running water, no sewers, no garbage collection no public transportation, no electricity, and no police services. It was as if the community had been forgotten, except for the times when there was a need for land for undesirable services. Land was expropriated to allow railway tracks to divide the community. Factories were built on its outskirts and it was coded as industrial land by the city in order to justify its non-development. In 1962, the city simply decided to eliminate the community altogether. This began the process of erasure. On January the 2nd, 1970, the final house was destroyed. Today, the physical community of Africville is gone, erased by the wrecking ball. All that remains on the land is a replica of the old Seaview Baptist Church, now called the Africville Museum. The museum represents a token of redress from the city, a way to make right the ways the city failed and eventually destroyed an entire community. This book provides the reader with an intimate look inside this place called Africville. It reminds us that while the bulldozers may have removed the bricks and mortar, the community remains. It lives on in the elders who remember what it was. It is reborn in each new generation who are taught its rich history by their parents, uncles, aunties, and cousins. The images on the pages that follow have been lovingly photographed by William Brown's descendant, Amanda Carvery Taylor. They bear testament to a community resilience and introduce us to the people of Africville. This is a love story told in pictures. As a child of Africville, Amanda shares the community as only an insider could. The images and stories serve as reminders that the community William Brown and William Arnold helped build has withstood misunderstanding, neglect, and racism and continues to live on. This book is not a history of Africville. It intentionally shies away from that perspective and reminds us that community is not just geography. Rather, community is about families and friendships, 
It is about shared, shared stories of joy and hardships, about struggle and loss, but most importantly, community is about love. A love letter to Africville, um, this item circulates. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.